In raw format, we can open the file with our camera software or with Photoshop and it gives us access to processing the raw format into a file and others can read. Up the top here we have what's called the histogram, so a visual mapping of the tonality of the file. We can click the little arrows to expand and see what things that we can control. The first thing is the colour profile that it was shot in and Adobe Colour is a standard one to choose. The temperature can be changed at this point without quality loss. If you set it in your camera correctly, then you can go as shot. Or you can select the particular light source of the day. You can also move the slider here at the temperature control or control the tint from magenta to more green. It's important to get your colour balance right. There is a eyedropper here where you can click on something that should be middle grey in the scene, or I'll try here, to a nice middle grey area. You can change the exposure, how light or dark it is, how contrasty it is, so make the blacks blacker and the whites brighter, or you can adjust the highlights or the shadows independently, or the white point and the black point in the image. You can also improve the clarity or sharpness in the image. If you have some sort of haze, you can dehaze your image, which will also increase its sharpness. There's a vibrance and saturation slider to make your colours stand out more. Then you might even want to desaturate the image. We can adjust the image with a sophisticated tool called Curves in Photoshop. And this is the black point of a curve and the white point. And this is our middle grey point and adjust that area of the curve. We've got some other areas where we can affect the detail in the image mix the colour around independently if we wish ourselves, do colour grading, what our highlights, shadows or midtones. You can always click the visibility icon to see what sort of difference that you made. Our optics is our lens and whether we might have any distortion from that. You can load different brands of cameras, different types of lenses and usually it will automatically detect the lens that you shot on. You can change the distortion in the image. You can get it to pinch or bulge the image. Vignette is a darkening of the edges. You can look at the geometry in the image and manually transform the verticals, horizontals, change the aspect ratio if I'm distorting it vertically or horizontally. There's also effects such as grain and vignetting and particular calibration versions. I'm just going to set that geometry back to zero. Just stick with the basics until you get a bit more familiar with the program. An important step is to check down here at the bottom the settings for your bit depth. We have 16 bits per channel selected to get the highest quality and you don't want image sizing ticked. So untick that so it doesn't resize the image for you and then you can go OK. Now we're ready to open the image and it'll process it into a Photoshop file and we can get it ready for print. It's important with your navigator you can zoom into the image to view it at 100% just to check how sharp it is because this is how it will print. If we go up to the image menu and select image size we can view the resolution of our file and for print quality we want to make sure it's at 300 pixels per inch. I'm going to put it into centimeters so I can see how big the document is. When I have resampled ticked, it means that I can actually adjust the size of the image. And I'm just going to untick that for a minute. If your resolution isn't 300, it's 72. If you untick this and put in 72, it's not going to reduce or change or enlarge the size of your document by changing the resolution. Then you can tick resample if you need to size the document. Now this is a bit bigger than what I want to print. I'm going to print to an A4 size. I'm going to choose a resample engine that's appropriate. Because I'm reducing, I choose by cubic sharper. And then I can go in and change the centimetres. I'm going to make it 21 centimetres wide and 14 centimetres high and select OK. Now you'll see that because this little link is active, I can unlink it, but when it's active, it's going to change the height 
and width proportionally. Up the top you can see what the image size is. So it's gone from 206 megabytes down to 23. So I'm actually reducing the size of my file. If I go to the file print option in Photoshop, here we can get a visual display of it on the page. It's choosing the printer that I've got connected to my computer and in the print settings we can go in and adjust the page size if we need to. So I've got it set to A4 here. Quality and media is an important one to set when you're printing. You can choose photo papers. Depending on the printer you'll have different options available. Where your paper is coming from and the print quality. You can choose high standard and then we can hit save. And then we're ready to do the colour settings for printing. The colour handling, choose Photoshop manages the colours rather than the printer. You need to also choose the printer that you're going to and the type of paper with its colour profile. Choose hard proofing rather than normal proofing. Leave simulate black ticked. Here we can change position and size. So at the moment it's 100% can just tick it to scale to fit the media. I needed to shrink it a little bit because printers often need a little bit of a border on the edge of the paper. Or I could type in 80% if I like. I can untick center and I can actually place the image somewhere else on the page and make the most of my paper. And then I hit print to send it to the printer with those settings applied to save the file so that you can access it again in the future. File, Save As, go up and name your file and choose an appropriate format. So to keep all the layers and it save in Photoshop's native format, we can also save a copy. When we save a TIFF file, we can include layers, but if we're taking it to the printer, we don't need that. We can hit Save. Under Image Compression, we choose LZW, then that's a lossless method, so we won't lose quality. In the byte order, I recommend choosing IBM PC so it'll open on both platforms. We'll also save a copy as a JPEG just in case we have any problems opening the TIFF at the printers and to show you the compression options which are lossy. We will be losing quality if we go too far with the compression options but we'll get a very small file size. So I'm going to keep it on the maximum and then go OK. We go and have a look at those files. We can compare the file size, the Photoshop being the largest and the JPEG being quite small, portable online. We can also save a very common file format and that's the PDF. Don't need layers. We can actually preserve the Photoshop editing so we don't need to do this for, for printing. We can choose what version of Adobe Acrobat that it's going to be compatible with. We don't want to go too high just in case someone's opening it with an older version. And at the top it's got presets where you can choose a high quality print document. Go into compression. We don't want to change the size or do anything to our image. We've got that all set up. Under output we don't want any conversion. You can apply a password here if you wish. And there's a summary of our settings. And we can hit save PDF. And there we have our PDF document. Much smaller than our TIFF but still a little bit bigger than the JPEG but with no quality loss.